And it is such an exciting thing that Jesus Christ is coming back to change us, to change the world, to establish the world in righteousness. You know, Jesus Christ's righteousness upon the earth. It, it is such a mind-blowing concept to change the world from all that Pastor Kevin showed in his previous slides, the disaster that man has created into just the wonderful peace that Jesus Christ will bring upon the earth with you and I, ruling and reigning with him. So the Lord's return is probably the single most um, relevant topic to us in terms of prophecy. If you want to understand any prophecy, the Lord's return is the one that's going to affect you most. The other one is, of course, the prophecy of receiving the Holy Spirit, because that was spoken about 2,000 years ago, and it continues to happen if it's spoken about prior, and it happens now, therefore it's prophetic. So those two prophecies affect you and I. But today we're looking at the Lord's return. So, next slide. I'm not even going to attempt to use my little, my little thing here. Lord's return. Right, they're the four questions we're going to quickly look at this morning. Why do we believe that Jesus is coming back? Uh, will there be any signs? When will he come back? Brave question. And what will happen when he comes back? So, next slide. Why do we believe Jesus Christ is coming back? Well, the simple answer is that Jesus said so. So that's a pretty good start, isn't it? In Matthew 24 and verse 3 it says, and I'm going to go through a lot of scripture, I don't apologise for that, it is the Lord's return, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives and the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world. So the world will end. Do not believe the Lord. The world will end. Matthew 24 and verse 27, as lightning comes out of the east and shines into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So it will come and it will be fast. Matthew 24 and verse 36, it says, But of the day and the hour no man knows, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying, and giving to marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And they, and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. No man knows when Jesus comes back. Not even Jesus knows when he's going to come back. Only The Bible says only the Father knows when Jesus Christ will come back. Same as in the days of Noah, the flood took the, the saints, if you like, away, and Jesus Christ is going to take us away also. Why do we believe Jesus is coming back? Angels said so. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. When the angels spoke unto the disciples as they saw Jesus going up into heaven. And when they had spoken these things, while they were beheld... He was taken up and a cloud received him out of this sight and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So these are obviously angels, uh, which he said, you men of Galilee, why stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall come in like manner as you see him go. So they were standing there looking up into the heavens. As you see him go into heaven, so you shall see him return in a like manner, in the same manner, going up, coming down. So we shall see him. All eyes shall see him and see him as his return. It will not be a secret, and it's certainly not a secret rapture. All eyes shall see him. Next slide. Pastor Kevin spent a bit of time on signs, and these signs are very familiar to us. Matthew 24 and verse 6, and the hear of wars and rumours of wars. I think the statistics are that last century, there was a war in every year of that century, somewhere in the world. So that is certainly fulfilled to, hear, to have wars, not even to hear of wars. We hear of the wars, but the wars are actually taking place. 
And see that none be troubled, none be troubled, for all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there'll be sham, uh, shamans, uh, famines and pestilences and earthquakes. Earthquakes certainly has increased in the last 30 years. You can go to the American Geological Survey Office, and they have a, a free website there, and it's, it's plenty of information, statistical information. You can download it yourself and do your own statistical analysis, and earthquakes above a five, I think, my, my research, above a uh, Richter scale of five, are definitely increasing. And that's established. We don't know how many earthquakes were 100 and 200 years ago because we didn't have information about it, didn't have measuring devices. But we do know in the last 30 years that earthquakes are certainly increasing. And that can be easily established via this website. Do your research yourself. Earthquakes are on the increase. Almost on the news every week, we hear some earthquake of somewhere around the world, some eight or nine uh, Richter scale earthquake somewhere in the world. Verse eight, it says that these will be the beginning of sorrows and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and they shall kill you and they shall hate all nations for your name's sake, for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and false prophets shall arise and deceive many. Well, there's been many false prophets uh, Pastor Kevin had in his slide, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. That's a good summary of the false prophets, you know, Mormons, uh, J-dubs, they're all false prophets. They're saying, you don't need to, you're speaking in tongues as of the devil. That's not the word of God says, that's a false prophet, changing the word of God. And the hearts of many grow cold, including saints. So it's a real danger and it's a warning for us to make sure that our heart isn't hardened against our brother and sister, against things of God, what happens in our life, that we keep our hearts soft and malleable, that it won't become cold to the things of God. Zechariah 14 is a fantastic chapter as a summary of the plan of God. It starts from the day of the Lord, and I believe that to be a 24-hour period of time, the day of the Lord. And it goes right through to the millennium, what we call the millennium. There's not a Bible word, the millennium. It's a thousand years is the Bible word, but we refer, generally refer to it as millennium. But we're going to go through it. I didn't, I didn't record when I started. When did I start talking? No one knows? Good. Starts now. It's quarter, quarter past 12. Beautiful. When do you want lunch? Two? Three? Behold, so, Zechariah 14. Fantastic summary of the Lord's return. Behold, the day of the Lord comes and takes spoil and shall divide uh, in the midst. So this is a 700 year prophecy prior to Jesus Christ coming upon the earth or 2,700 years from now. And for I'll gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Well, what an amazing prophecy that is because that is what is happening. My brother has done a, a slide, he works in foreign affairs, and done a slide of all the various countries in the Middle East and how they hate one another. It's in, there will be no peace in the Middle East, even though men may try to declare it, that this is peace and safety, which is what Trump's trying to do. I'll gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled and half the city shall go into captivity and the residue of the people Shall not cut off from the city. There's a lot here. I'll just try to cut to the chase. And then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. And when he had fought in the battle, day of the battle. So we've got the day of the Lord, enemies against Jerusalem. We can see that all happening today. That's not a question. In verse 5, and it says, And the Lord will make my God shall come and all and with his saints. So that's obviously us. It's the day of the Lord. We don't quite know the timing of it all, but we will rise to meet the Lord in the air and Jesus, as Jesus Christ comes back, and then we're straight into it. There's no barbecues, there's no lounge chairs of drinking milkshakes. You're into it, serving God. Seems to be from the scripture. And verse seven, it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. So it's a single day. Uh, I'm just sort of quickly reading here. Uh, and down in verse 12 of Zechariah 14. So I, I haven't put the whole scripture up, that, up there. 
So this is for you to go and do homework. You probably know these scriptures very well. And this, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that are fought against Jerusalem. The flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes. That is a peculiar thing to um, radiation from a nuclear bomb. You can't get that pretty well from anything else where your eyes are melting in your socket and your tongues in your mouth. You can't get that from a volcano exploding because that's just general convection heating and your whole body will be melted. That's not specific. So it does talk about nuclear. Some people say it may not be nuclear, but for me, this is a pretty convincing scripture that it'll most likely be nuclear because of um, flesh consuming while they stand upon their feet, as we know in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. This was the evidence that they had people with socket, um, just empty eye sockets and no tongues wandering around. That is the evidence. So most likely it's to be nuclear. And it shall come to pass, uh, don't read that, 15, it shows shall the play of the horse and the mule and the camel and the donkey, I don't say ass, I say donkey, very dangerous word, get yourself a lot of trouble. And all the beasts that shall be in the tents as this plague. And I think the fascinating thing about this is the establishment of the Feast of Tabernacles, just re-establishment of the law. And it won't be the law of sacrifice, of course, because Jesus Christ was our only sacrifice, but it'll probably be the most likely laws of finance and agriculture and administration and all the things that bring great prosperity back upon the earth. That will be the law that will be re-established. And the countries that do not obey the law, God will not reign upon them. In other words, start ruling with a rod of iron and start being tough with those who will not abide by the commandments of God. And I love this verse, verse 20, in that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. So the graffiti of the day will be holiness unto the Lord. All the world will know that God is real, that Jesus Christ is his son and we're his saints. It'll be that evident. Uh, number three, I didn't think it'd take quite this long. Number three, uh, sorry, next slide, which is question number three. When will it come back? 28, 28 October 1992. That was a pamphlet placed on my windscreen of my car when I was doing an outreach in Cooma, the small town of Cooma. I think they were wrong. The pamphlet said, Lord's Return, 28 October 1992. And this was back in July or something of that same year. And gave some scriptures. Okay. What's Matthew 24 say? You can even tell me. I can hear you say, oh, there it is there. <laughs> I can't do that trick. No man knows the day or the hour. So no, we, we don't know when Jesus Christ is coming back, but there are signs, there are seasons, there are events listed in the Bible for us to look at, which I've just quickly referred to. And there is a general time frame referred to in the Bible that we can refer to also. In, in um, Hosea 6 and verse 2, and after two days he'll revive us, and the third day he'll raise us up and we shall live in his sight. So two days is 2,000 years, it revives us, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Third day, the millennium, 1,000 years of peace, raises us up and we shall be with him. So that's a, that's a, that's a pretty interesting scripture, isn't it? There are other scriptures that uh, talk about this particular time. The Good Samaritan is another one. Talks about uh, taking the man on the side of the road to the inn and gave two pence. So two pence can be considered 2,000 years. But see, they took him to the inn. The inn is the church. Outpouring of the Holy Ghost. We take people to the church 2,000 years. Going fast now. Book of Revelation. We're at the, the last. They've got seals and trumpets and vials. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vials. All representing the uh, his, history of mankind over the last, what, over 1,500 years. And the last vial, I think we're in the last vial. The seventh vial. And it says, it has this phrase in, have I got it listed there? Uh, Revelation 16, 17, um, it is done. And it only occurs twice in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 21 and Revelation 16. So it's pretty significant that that phrase is there, it is done after the seventh vial. It is over and we are there. So the book of Revelation points to the fact that we're at the end of all those sort of events in the world. So there's pretty three pretty simple things.
that dictate that we're pretty close to it. And you attach the signs to it, things that are happening upon the world, attach revelation to it. Yeah, it looks like us now. Last slide. Uh, what happens when he comes back? These are my favourite verses. Love these verses. 1 Thessalonians 4. The voice of an archangel. What's that sound like? Is that, oi? Is that the Australian version? Or is it some melodic thing? I don't know. It'll be pretty amazing. The, the voice of an archangel. The trump of God. That, that won't be a little, the trump of God won't be something like, it's not going to be that, is it? It's going to be long and loud. That is what there seems to be in the Old Testament, long and loud blast of whatever it is. It, it may be spiritual talk, but I think it's most likely physical. The trump shall sound. And the dead in Christ, our brothers and sisters who we love have died in the Lord, they shall rise to meet the Lord in the air. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And that is just such a wonderful scripture that we can great, draw great comfort from it, that there is a, time, a moment in time when we shall be transformed. And whether we see the Lord in this natural body or whether we die, it doesn't matter. We die, we're in the front row seat. We get there first, but if we're alive, well and good. 2 Peter 3 verse 10 and 11 talks about the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. These are the other things that will help happening. It's ju God's judgment upon the world. God is pretty cranky. He's cranky with the world. And he always, ju he always judges unrighteousness. That is always, that's the theme throughout the Bible. He uses other nations to judge unrighteousness and that's what he is doing here now. Most likely by nuclear devices. We are going to change, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, in a moment and a twinkling of an eye, these bodies shall take on incorruption and immortality. Just spend a couple minutes of your life thinking what that is going to be like. We run around on you know, crazy heads doing all sorts of things. Allow yourself the luxury of thinking what it will be like for your body to be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, how will that feel? What will that be like? And the last scripture, Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that is part of the first resurrection, which is what is coming, is the first resurrection. And of such the second death has no power, but we shall be priests of God and we shall reign with him a thousand years. And that is just a wonderful, another wonderful promise to us. That really the millennium that is to come is the start of God's plan, I consider it. We at the moment... It's more like window dressing. We're bringing people to the Lord, but that's when it's really going to kick off, the millennium period when we bring the world into righteousness and godliness. And it's really going to kick off. So people think, we think about sometimes Lord return as the end. It's not the end, it's actually the beginning. It's the start of something really wonderful and really marvellous. And we just got to maintain our faithfulness to the word of God, to Jesus Christ. Stay in the Lord and we shall see Jesus, when he returns, all the people said.